Commissioner Abbott? Here. Commissioner Adkins? Here. Commissioner Blanchard? Here. Commissioner Hill? Here. Commissioner Brandt? Here. Commissioner Campbell? Here. Commissioner Franklin? Here. Commissioner Morrison? Here. Commissioner Nunley? Here. Commissioner Rawlins? Here. Commissioner Schaefer? Here. Commissioner Thompson? Here. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, each of you uh, have gotten your packet from the last meeting. Uh, at this time, is there anything that you need to uh, add or delete to the minutes? If not, I would entertain a motion uh, to approve. Motion to approve. Motion made and second. Second. All in favor by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed like sign. All right. Moving on. Uh, agenda item number six. Uh, at this time, it's, it's uh, when we uh, elect the uh, new commission chair for uh, this upcoming year. I'd like to open the floor uh, for a motion for a temporary chair to preside over uh, that uh, portion of the meeting. So I entertain a motion to appoint someone as chair. Make a motion to appoint Donald Blance temporary chair. Motion by the Is there a second? Second. 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 All in favor saying aye. Aye. Commissioner Blanchard, I assume you you accept that to preside over I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's Peggy's game lined up. All right. So we'll entertain the motion for the chairman. I make a motion, David Abbott. Got right here a second. Second. Any other motions? Madam Clerk, we'll have a roll call vote. Commissioner Abbott. Yes. Commissioner Adkins? Yes. Commissioner Blancett? Yes. Commissioner Blevins? Yes. Commissioner Brandt? Yes. Commissioner Campbell? Yes. Commissioner Franklin? Yes. Commissioner Hargis? Yes. Commissioner Mason? Yes. Commissioner Morrison? Yes. Commissioner Nunley? Yes. Commissioner Rawlins? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Thompson? Yes. You're the new chairman and I'll turn the meeting back over to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> I get paid extra for that. <laughs> <laughs> Ten cents. Ten cents. Thank all of you. I hope I didn't want to embarrass our commission in any way as we move through our meetings. So uh, I appreciate the uh, the um, nomination and the vote again. Um, so at this time, I'd like to uh, move on to uh, our vice chair selection. I'll open the floor for any nominations. I'd like to nominate Donald Blancett. I'd like to nominate Joey Blevins. Okay. We have we have a nomination for Donald Blancett. We have a nomination for Joey Blevins. Any Motion. other nominations? Motion to nomination seats. All in favor of saying aye. Aye. Any opposed like so. All right. So at this time, uh, what we'd like to do uh, first, since Mr. Blancett was nominated first, uh, we'd like to take a roll call vote uh, for that uh, nomination. <laughs> do the roll call vote and let them announce who they're voting for. Okay. Yeah. Do either one of you or both of you ready for the uh, for the roll call vote? Yeah. All right. Um, <coughs> let Jamie get finished up here. So. Commissioner Abbott. Um, I'm going to uh, have to say Commissioner Blancett. Commissioner Atkins. Commissioner Campbell? Blevins. Commissioner Franklin? Blevins. Commissioner Hargis? Blanchett. Commissioner Mason? Blevins. 
Commissioner Morrison? Blevins. Commissioner Nunley? Blevins. Commissioner Rawlins? Blevins. Commissioner Schaefer? Blevins. Commissioner Thompson? Blevins. <laughs> Commissioner Blevins, you know, thanks everybody for the, their comments. You get even with us some way, won't you? Well, congratulations. We'll do a great job. Commissioner Blancett, you, you served well and we appreciate you again. So. But welcome, Commissioner Blevins, as co chair now. All right. <clears throat> Any further questions? Moving on. Um, agenda item number eight, uh, which will be Barrett Long Rocks, Rock Truck Traveling Pocket Road. Is Mr. Barrett Long here? I, I don't think Barrett wanted to uh, speak this evening. This is out on the Pocket Road. Uh, they go down there in the pocket and get rock out. And they've got their trucks coming in and out all the time. Um, pocket road's a narrow road. It's got some pretty good curves in it. Uh, having several people in the community being run off the road by the trucks. Uh, how to address this situation, I don't know. Um, maybe a sign at the top of the hill and the bottom of the hill, you know, warning about the trucks. You know, we had a incident a few, probably about six months ago, uh, the young man on South Pittsburgh Mountain. Uh, something happened after that, you know, I think some signs were put up. I believe we'll have to do something before we have a problem. Do whatever we can. Now, this, this particular pocket road, the, the, the uh, truck's hauling there, we've had several complaints about that, yes. have we not? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, the sheriff, I talked with the sheriff, and he said highway patrol out there, and deputies out there, stop and talk to the truckers, trying to slow them down. You know, signage might help, but uh, there has been an attempt to, uh, the sheriff's department and THP to, to slow those trucks down, try to make them, I mean, they're bringing eight, you know, 53 foot flatbeds out there with a rock on them, and they're getting in other lanes, they're trying to make those curves. Mr. Long's wife was almost hit head on. And this is a county road? <coughs> yeah. and, and I'm satisfied the owner of the trucks, you know, they don't want action in as much as somebody else does. Yeah. Um, maybe some signage might slow people down, might give them a warning. Yeah, narrow. Sure. Do you have any input on this? Uh, I know you've had some officers out there. Well, I've put in three requests from highway trucks if they do come commercial enforcement. They have been out there. So out there off and on. Uh, I'll be truthful, the last four weeks I haven't been concentrating on much when it comes up what else happens. So uh, I haven't had any complaints in my four weeks, but we have uh, been out there and we have talked to the owner and, and you're right. There's we are trying to work with do better. So I think the road commission did you say one of the country went out of business? Yeah, when I asked him to put up a bond by both of those companies. The other side, he just pulled up and went back. The biggest one out the end of the pocket road, before we won't get to where the end of it, he's at. Uh, I talked to him in Atlanta. He owns it out of Atlanta, Georgia. And he agreed to put up a barn part of the road. Other than that, I mean, you can put some signs up, but we pay for that. You don't park the road. You're long about to over us, Does any commissioners have any suggestions or any ideas? Could we possibly have a letter sent to uh, the property or business owner from, from our council addressing the Good. safety concerns? Sure. Commissioner <coughs> Blevins. Try to think of something. I mean, maybe signage would help. Would putting that up to not currently, no. A, a sign going down into the pocket at the top uh, with the warning, and then a sign at the bottom, people starting up, the trucks coming down, may help. 
this a county road? I yes, think it, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Road commissioner's here. Yeah, yeah, he is. How? Yeah. Can we get some signs on that road? Yeah, you can put some signs on it. I don't want you to help. Well, I mean, we can try it to yeah. see. Yeah, yeah, you can try it to see. There's no problem with the signs up there. Yeah. Anything's okay. better than nothing. Um, yes, um, but I think we have a, a, a recommendation, or we'll take it as a motion to actually uh, send a notification uh, from a legal standpoint by letter uh, to the property owners there, as well as uh, good call would put some signage up as well. Yeah, I'll second it. Motion is second. All in favor, saying aye. 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 You look like All right. Thank you. Uh, next is approved surplus property of Marion County Highway Department. The call. We've got two tractors. I'd like to surplus out. We'll give them up for auction or wherever. Uh, there's a forward that caught fire and burnt over to Washington. And there's a 98 John Deere. It could be a 98 or 99 on the serial number. So it's just a wore out. The transmission is bad and rear end. And we replaced the two new ones this year. So I'd like to go just in the surplus time to get rid of them. All right, thank you, motion. Second surplus. The motion is, excuse me. One, one question, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hawk, on the, um, on the memo that you submitted to the commission members, you described the John Deere tractor as being a 2014 model. Is that is that a That's mistake? When, uh, John, did you buy it in 214? Or did Neil? Somebody, somebody bought it in 214. Okay. Is, that's when they bought it, or was that they a bought year, it year model? Yeah. Year model of it. No, that's not the year model. That's okay. when it was bought. Okay. I think, Corey, did you not tell me it was you that bought it in Austin? It was you. Yeah, it's a little bit Yeah, it's all the for all the purposes, we just need to make sure that what they approve to, to declare surplus is the, you know, is the correct piece of equipment. Yeah. So, is it a 50 horse? Uh, do you know if it's a 50 feet five or? I don't know. It's probably about 70 horsepower. It's a big tractor. So, so, so we'll be more descriptive, and our auditors won't question this. Could you make sure and, and get uh, the? Uh, I know the year model may be a little. But if you could get the actual size of, of the tractor. Yeah, I can get the size of the tractor, but now we run a serial number on it. It was made in 1998 or 99. Okay. It could be sold either, either way. Either way. Okay. And then you've got an 89 Ford tractor. Yeah. That doesn't work out. Okay. So, so, so the re recommendation from you is a 1989 Ford tractor and a 1989, I mean 1998, 99. John Deere tractor with diamond boom mower. Yeah. yeah. You've heard a recommendation for a good call. Any questions for him? We've already got a motion and a second to allow the call to sell those in surplus property. All in favor saying aye. Aye. Any opposed like so. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, the agenda item number 10 approved TDEC ARP allocation plan. Mr. Chairman, uh, we've had a couple workshops on this, and this is the $3.9 million that is coming to the county. And what has been recommended uh, uh, to the commission, uh, we've met with Beth Jones a couple times, and uh, the total allocation is $3.9 million. Um, administration costs gets 3% of that, which is $117,000. Uh, Griffiths Creek, which did not qualify for funding, uh, the money has to be used on utilities, but utility districts didn't receive any funding. Uh, so uh, they're, they're asking to replace water lines uh, on Lee Morrison Road. Uh, the uh, teeth deck funding will be $228,750. The match will be $76,250. Total project will be $305,000. Tracy City, which bought the Foster Falls water system several years ago, has asked for funding to replace a pump station in the uh, amount of $225,000. Uh, 
we would give $191,250 to that project and they would pay the match of $33,750. Uh, then what's been recommended uh, is for South Pittsburgh and Jasper to do interconnect on Industrial Boulevard in South Pittsburgh and Kim will do interconnect. That project is a uh, sub total about $2.5 million. Uh, so the uh, TDAC funding will be $1.2 million. Uh, uh, let me back up. Would be $2 million. The match would be a, a $1.1 million. Um, so uh, that's, uh, we think that that's very important. We've seen in the past couple of months uh, down in Mississippi, in you know, Somerville, Georgia, where they had flooding and stuff, and their water system and water plants were down. This would be give a a way to supply water between the cities and hopefully maybe Jasper can do an interconnect with Tennessee America Water down the road and connect quickly in too because they, they supply water to them. And then uh, we would give Jasper uh, some funding uh, to do some improvements to their sewer system. Uh, Kimball would get some funding. South Pittsburgh would get some funding uh, on some water improvements and then Monegal would get some funding uh, to do some improvements on their sewer system and that's about 1.3 million dollars of that total there so in the match is 15 percent on everybody except Kimball and the county uh, the Kimball's 25 percent match so this is the plan that's been presented y'all y'all had a copy of it um, so, so we, no question What, what they've agreed to do is do $20,000 and borrow the money from the county to pay the additional part. Um, so I had a conversation with uh, Beth Jones earlier this morning and she talked with their chairman, Paul LeVan, if Paul's here tonight or not, um, and sort of indicated they'd like to try to do both their projects, but uh, this is what was presented to you all is to do the one project because you have 30 meters and they have more service calls on Lee Morrison Road than they do down to the 20 customers they have on the pocket road. Again, are they going to pay the match or are they going to They'll pay 20000 and we, we'll, loan, we'll loan them the balance, the $56,000. We would loan that to them, just, just like we did the town of Orm on that project we did for them. We had the meeting and you were, we were supposed to be notified about that or uh, we, we did. They, they were going to go and, and meet about the loan and come back to us whether they could. They, they, I, I'm just telling you that's what I got from Beth Jones this morning. Nobody contacted me to this morning. Not any contact from them at all, Mr. Franklin. Well, I, I'm, I don't know what I'm voting on then, but I guess we're paying for this and we're paying. This is what was presented. This is what we talked about well, in the last workshop. What if we don't pass this right now? What is that? Is it tonight? You can lose it. You can lose it. Go back to the government, state, state, Tennessee. Yeah. We got some of the uh, Tennessee Medicare money that was They say you could do 10 on each one if they put the 10 together. Okay. That'd, that'd be 20. So, yeah. so we'd be doing loan for 56,000. That's correct. On a 20 year AM? Whatever they want to work out. But here's the thing, and uh, Paula or y'all can correct me, I don't think their board is meant to vote to, to do a loan with the county. Yeah, they did. We have a $20,000 
20 year term. Is that what was agreed upon? So you got y'all were comfortable with a 20 year term on the repayment of the 56,000 to the Yeah, that's correct. Okay. All right. And this is for one project? Yes. Or two? One. So, so let's clarify 76,250 is the match. They're paying 20,000. Yes. Yeah. We'll finance 56,250, mm -hmm. uh, just like we've done for ORM and other projects, other cities. Um, and um, the amortization will be over 20 years. And they will pay no that. Interest. No interest. Yeah, no, no interest. And they will pay that back. Most, some we've done monthly. Is that continue? Monthly is what you agree. Okay. Yeah. So, so the repayment agreement will be paid back monthly on the fifty-six thousand two fifty zero percent. Fifty-six. Any other questions? No, I have answered my question. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I have a motion from Commissioner hey, hey. Yes, sir. Can I say one thing? Yes, sir. Uh, state job with me, and we land that road up to Marsh Road to pay. We widened it and just now put new pavement on it. Uh, about eight weeks now, I guess. So it's just been freshly paid. If they're going to put a water line in, they're going to have to tear some of it up. And uh, it's got the stripes, hay, and everything. See, I put it in uh, back last year. So where we go ahead and that way if anybody's got anything to do, then they'll notify us some way or another. But they, we had no means of knowing that there's going to be a water line or we'll put it off for next year. That was $152,000 over there on the asphalt. The, um, do you know how, how many times you'll have to cross the new road there? I, I know that's a probably a difficult question. Um, I do not know. Um, I do know that they would do a bore underneath the road to, you know, connect yeah, the board. 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 Right. Right. Um, But, I mean, it, the whole point of the, um, the project is to fix it. I know it went back and forth several times now, but that's, you know, the point of the project is to help, you know, put the line in or put it in right. And, um, but I can find out. Well, I'd say the county have to go back and repay it, you know, if they're going to tear it up. Of course, I know they'll pass it to put it back right. I have no problem with that. But it's still going to be a... Mr. Chairman, that should be included, if I'm not mistaken, in the bid price when that project's engineered. Mm -hmm. There's, there's the 100 tape. yards of pavement involved in the, in the, in the cost. In the cost. Okay. And I, I imagine they would bore before they could bore. Yeah. That. I'm just wondering. I mean, for our rural uh, areas, uh, we don't need to throw this much money away, not let them have it over some pavement. That's, exactly That's true. Right. Okay, any other questions? Any other commissioner have any questions? Mr. Chairman, yes. somebody asked a question about the monthly amount. It would be $235 a month over, over 20 years is what they would pay. So, okay. All right. Any other questions? We have a motion from, from Commissioner Schaefer. Is second. There a second. There's a second. All in favor by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed like sign? Motion carries. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks to all the cities and uh, uh, communities that participated in the grants and uh, hopefully that will be a, a large benefit for our area uh, to get this in, in underway. All right, um, agenda item number 11, approved resolution regarding waiver of certain uncollectible personal property taxes for Marion County. Um, I'll address that, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there's a resolution in front of you for uh, a waiver of uh, personal property taxes on a number of businesses that have been closed in the county for some time. The assessor put this list together and uh, working with the uh, county trustee and the county clerk and master um, and uh, the assessor has made the request that the uh, county commission waive these uh, taxes so that the county can stop spending money trying to collect from businesses that no longer exist and that don't have any assets in the county from which we could collect any monies at all. Um, 
a lot of these businesses have been closed for a number of years, but um, none of the officials that I just named have the legal authority to, to delete or waive or remove these uh, amounts from the tax rolls. Only the county commission and the chancellor in the delinquent tax lawsuit have the legal authority to do it. So that's why this resolution is in front of you all tonight. Uh, it's just an accounting thing so that we can get these get the books cleaned up uh, in this respect. So none of these businesses do business in Marion County anymore? They're not according to the assessor, no sir. That could be bonding, nothing exists anymore? Uh, that I don't know. You know, there's really just one that makes up about 120 of this 143, so. I was just curious. I thought it could be bonding still in business too. Yeah, that's hardest, but. Uh, Sheriff? Hope to be bonding still in operation. Yes, sir. They, they still do business in our county. That's my only point, and they, that's a pretty substantial amount of money. Yeah. If they're still doing business in the county. I think we need to look into that a little further, though. Oh, I'm sorry. I was on the wrong line there. I'm done. That's okay. I'll do it. Still substantial amount of money to afford, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the one you're looking at, Gene, is uh, Henry Speed and Farley. Yes, sir. That they've, got, they've got two operations, one in their old building, and they built a new one in Crossroads. It swapped over to a fitness center. This is personal yeah. property. Yes, this is, that's correct. This is personal property. Right, equipment. Right, equipment, right. Yeah. equipment personal property. Yeah. No, no land, no, no buildings. That's correct. Can, can someone bring me up to speed on this Blue Bridge media? Because they're out of business. They were a... Uh, Cable company headquartered in, initially in South Pittsburgh and then uh, moved to Jasper. They, uh, they've been out of business now for several years. Um, and we've done everything we could to try to collect yeah. them before they so so they Yeah, they are. So they, they, they left here owing not only the county, but uh, a number of the cities, significant amounts of money right. that nobody's been able to collect. 130000 there. Yeah. Right, that's right. Any other questions? Okay, you've heard the recommendation for waiver of um, 143,412 let, let me add something to, to comment on what Commissioner Hargis is questioning on Huckabee bonding. If you all want to, you know, to remove one of these from the list and try to collect through some other means, we certainly can do that. It's up to you all to decide. That's what we should do. <coughs> Can we make a suggestion that the office holders that were involved go back through and double check this list? Sure. Make, make our motion subject to, and if these businesses are currently still active in the community or in, in each of these towns that they're residing. Yeah. All right. Um, second. I have a motion. I have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed likes? No. All right, moving on to uh, agenda item number 12, discussion, Marion County Ambulance Service. Um, I think we had a discussion, I think uh, Commissioner Mason, we uh, had asked that we uh, catch all the new members up to date. Um, I think we have a representative here uh, from uh, Puckett. Puckett actually is not here. I guess it's Puckett. So um, if, if someone from Puckett would like to, to inform us and update us and, and uh, answer a few questions, we'd appreciate that. Yes, sir, Chairman. Absolutely. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, my name is Jake Lonis. I'm the Vice President of Puckett EMS. Uh, I'm new to this area, but I'm not new to EMS or Puckett EMS. Uh, but uh, uh, I've been brought up here to kind of help uh, Joe Dunn. He's my operations manager. He's kind of the day-to-day -day, uh, guy, the boots on the ground. Uh, many of y'all know Mr. Jason Newton. He's one of our field operations supervisors here. So uh, uh, we've been the contract provider, the ambulance provider for a number of years. Uh, actually, we'll be uh, in discussion with Mayor uh, Jackson about that contract. It technically expired in March of this year, but it has an automatic one-year renewal. Uh, so we're working on that automatic renewal, uh, but we'll be in negotiations uh, with Mayor Kimball on uh, our service delivery. And, uh, I'm here to answer any questions you guys might have. 
any commissioner would like to ask questions, just please feel free to go ahead. Well, my, you know, the main thing that, that I was concerned with was the, you know, the time frame that it's taking an ambulance to get to somebody that's in need. You know, I had had several people contact me, you know, on the, the arrival time of, the, yeah. of an ambulance once they called for one. And, you know, some were saying that it was taking 45 minutes. And when you've got a loved one in your arms that's dying, 45 minutes, I know what it feels like for five minutes. Sure, absolutely. So, I, you know, that's what really concerned me. Yeah, yeah. 45 minutes is absolutely entirely too, too long. We do have provisions in the contract that stipulate response times based on the urban versus rural. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the urban is uh, 13 minutes, rural is 20 minutes. 12, uh, 12 minutes. 12, 12, yes, 12 minutes. yes, thank you. Um, but you're absolutely right. Uh, if it was my grandma, you know, one minute would seem like a lifetime. Uh, and so absolutely, we take those seriously. If you have any specific instances, I want to look at those personally. Okay. Joe, Jason, uh, I'll, I'll provide cards for anybody. Uh, we want to look at those because okay. that, that is excessive. Uh, and I'm not trying to make excuses. There is a lot of extenuating circumstances going on uh, in the EMS industry today. Uh, industry today. Uh, the wall times of the hospital, that we are holding the wall uh, for upwards of 50 minutes to an hour trying to get that your ambulance back into the county. <coughs> Fortunately, I think two-thirds of the patients we transport here to Park Ridge West, so that's a relatively okay, are quick. they ever denied? Like I'm if, sorry? If, say if someone is picked up and say, is there a policy in place with the ambulance service that you can't take, you know, you won't take them to Chattanooga, say if they prefer to go to Erlanger or Memorial, you know, are they forced to go to Grandview or Park Ridge West? We won't force anybody to go anywhere. We will take them to where they want to go. Now, we will, we will suggest, based upon their acuity, maybe this hospital has the better service line you know, for your particular injury right. or illness, right. but no, uh, we'll, we'll go where they want to go. Okay. Absolutely. I, I can speak on that behalf. Yes, sir. My, my wife, they picked her up down here in Jasper. Yes, sir. We asked to go to Erlanger where her next surgery was at. No, is what we were told. Well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let me just, uh, an Erlanger will refuse us to bring patients to them. If they're on what's called, uh, they don't call it diversion, what do they call it? Advisory. If they're on advisory, meaning that they have a certain number of admin holes in the ER waiting to get a bed, they will not allow us to bring the patient there. So it's not us necessarily refusing to take your wife there. The hospital will not receive them. I got they never made a call. Sir? They never made a call. The, the crew, then I need to know that, sir, immediately so I can investigate that. Because they have to call uh, EROC to get authorization to come into Erlanger, and then they're the ones to tell us, no, we can't. Who, so, yes, how sir. do you document that? Sir? How do you document that? We document that in our in our patient care report. That you got down that they were the Erlanger? That we were diverted, there. yes, sir, from okay. one facility to the other. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. How many ambulances do you have in the uh, we have, uh, Joe, how many ambulances we have here in Marion County? We have three in Marion County, and then we have two in the Sequatchie and the rest in Chattanooga. You still have, you still have ambulances a day, too, that come up? No, sir, we do not. Okay. Where's the main county? Are you still transporting from, like, long-term health facilities? Are you doing those transports also? Uh, no, sir, we, uh, unfortunately, given our, our staffing challenges, uh, we've had to kind of prioritize who our uh, 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 service level is. Obviously, the 911 takes precedence. You know, we have Marion County, we have Sequatchie County, we also do Catoosa County uh, for the 911. But for the uh, long-term care SNP facilities, special nursing facilities, we've unfortunately had to tell them that I'm sorry, we just cannot service you. Uh, when did you uh, stop doing the long-term care facilities? It's it been within like the last two weeks. Okay. Yes, sir. Can I get one more thing from you? Yes, sir. I know you can't provide it tonight. 
I want to see a law where you've got how many people asked to be transported and Erlanger turns you down. Okay. Any other commissioner had any questions? Thank you for your information. Yes, yes, sir. I'll hang some contact cards right here. It's got my personal cell phone, email address. Please reach out to me. Okay. I'll, Thank you. Yeah, I'll look into that. Thank you very much. Our right, moving on to next agenda item, uh, budget amendments for any local government. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you have a decrease uh, in the fund balance of 79473 Move down to expenditures, health department contributions. Uh, that's $41,000 goes at uh, 75000 I gave to us to build the canopy. Uh, the next one, uh, library contributions. Uh, the raises and the employee salaries were misfigured, so that's a $7,644 increase we need to give to the library board. Um, then the next one, uh, other charges, that's 29880 for Beaver, uh, Beaver Man. We hired Bill Swan. And then the last one, 949.38, uh, we charged that uh, travel expense to the wrong account and moved it back to the right account number we need to be in. Just moved it from uh, billing, uh, billing inspector's office back to the trust, uh, uh, trustee of the accessory properties office. Any commissioner have any questions for Mike Jackson? Hearing none, I entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Oh, How come we don't see detail? All the others, we look at the school board and the road commission, they give us detail on where the money's being spent. And all we get is a sheet here with the fund balances. That's just what we've always done, Mr. Schaefer. It's been like that since I've been here, so we can look at changing that. But uh, that's what we've always done. And I explained what, where the money's going to, but that's something we'll do different. I'd like to see detail. Okay, any other questions for any commissioner? All right. Hearing none, and the request from Commissioner Safer, I'll entertain a motion. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. 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 All in favor of saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed, like sign? Opposed. Just, just so I'm clear on that last request. So, so the line items say health department contributions, library contributions, but what you, you're asking for detail on what they're going to do with the money? I want to know how we're spending our money. Okay, th th these are transfers, so th th this is it's not spending it. These are not expenditures, these are transfers between the, the general fund. Correct, Mayor? That is, that's expenditures that's going into those line items. Sorry. Yes. So, building inspector travel. You're asking, you want to see what specific travel went into that? Yeah. We're spending money every month. Yeah. And I'd like to know where the money is being spent. I understand. I'm just wanting to understand. Because we're responsible for the money. <laughs> yes, sir. And therefore, I'd like to know where it's going so that I have a comfort feeling that we are spending the money appropriately. I see no detail. I mean, when Com I look at the Commissioner Schaefer, I, I assure you, we spend the money appropriately. There's nothing inappropriate about what we're doing. I don't, uh, I take offense to say it's inappropriate. Uh, Can I make a yeah. suggestion here, if you don't mind? Commissioner uh, Schaefer, if, if you don't mind, and Mayor Jackson, if, if you could meet with Commissioner Schaefer, if he doesn't mind, and just kind of go through. I know, uh, as being a new commissioner, you have questions, and maybe you, you can sit down and, and break down what that yeah. looks like. And then, make changes to what would work better if there is any. So is that okay, Commissioner? Right. Yeah, sure. So so uh, we have a motion and a second. Um, we already voted. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. I was trying to make sure we got all the information you needed there, Commissioner. All right, so that has uh, passed. So we'll move on to uh, uh, report number, line item number 14, budget amendments, Marion County Board of Education. And I say this every time, give us some good news, Dr. Griffin. I can start out with good news. We've got equipment on the property there, Mr. Chairman. So we're actually working through the uh, working through the permits and uh, should be 
hopefully breaking ground soon. We're actually going to have a ceremony to invite you all at the previous commission. We're very excited about, about to move forward with that commission. So I can, that, is, that is good news. Let me say that. And Mr. Chairman, I have, I know you all, you all have packets. I don't have the order you're in. So if someone actually call out what what you were looking at, that would help me tremendously. Grand Regional Carryover Reallocation and Total Award for four columns at the bottom. Slide 142, Amendment 1. 142, Amendment 1. Is that the, the title? Title 1, 2, 3, down at the bottom? Is that yes. what you're looking at? Mm -hmm. Yes. Basically, those are carryover. Uh, obviously, anything that, that carries over from, from the previous year or reallocation, you all have to approve. Basically, this is all just a reallocation or carryover. Basically, savings from last year that we did not use, and we're requesting it to be refunded. Any commissioner have any questions for Superintendent? All right, so we'll be voting on Federal Project Fund 142, Amendment 1. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. 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 All right. Well, Griffin, moving on to, uh, let's see. we got Fund 141, General Purpose School <coughs> Fund Commission Amendment Number 1. And then you'll, it's got attached to find our August budget amendment, general purpose school fund, which will include your grant carryover, you say schools grant. That is correct. Basically, that is the 21st century grant. That, that as well as carryover, that was money is not spent that we're requesting to be rebudgeted. Safe schools grant, that's new money from the state that we're asking you all to approve for us to go ahead and start that. <coughs> All right, any commissioner have any questions? If none, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve. Motion second. Made. A second. All in favor saying aye. Aye. Need to put the clock down. All right. We have one more. Should have, should have three more. more. There, Mr. Three. Chairman. There's three oh, yeah. more. I, I, sorry, I didn't get to it. <laughs> um, let's see. So I guess as we fund 141 general purpose commission amendment two. Uh, no. that, that's uh, yeah. dated September 26th. There's, there's three more. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. Uh, 21st century CCLC yes. grant. Yes, sir. New Mr. Maintenance. That is actually the new allocation of the grant. You'll drop down below there. Number two is the new maintenance personnel. That is money that we are utilizing our fund balance for. We have made that higher, and that as well as special education, bus driver, and bus attendant. That is no increase to the county's maintenance of effort on our way. <clears throat> so I'm going to ask one question. The line item uh, for the teacher carry over $30,000, that's not carried over into your uh, into your maintenance personnel, is it? No, sir. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Motion, motion second. 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 All in favor saying aye. Aye. Any opposed like sign. All right, let's see. Federal Projects Fund 142, Amendment Number 2. Um, I think this is literacy training. Stopping. That is the federal, uh, that is a literacy training grant, stopping grant for teachers that uh, done that work. That is a, actually a reallocation from the state. Uh, as well as there's an addition, we did get another grant, a math implementation grant, that you see for $71,250. So that is a 
we're, re, we're budget requesting you all to approve <coughs> that bus to budget that. All right, any other questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Is a motion to second? Second. Second. All in favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. aye. Motion carries. Uh, I think this is the last one. Fund 143 Child Nutrition uh, Commission Amendment Number One will be the PEBT grant and salary adjustment. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. That is actually a that was a pandemic thing when it started. That is PEBT card for the underprivileged, and basically that is a new grant this year, and we're actually budgeting for that. And we just got that allocation up on it. We were actually awarded that, I will say, about two to three weeks ago. And none of these are maintenance of effort at all? No, sir. Okay. All right, I'll entertain a motion unless someone has a question. Motion, motion made. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor saying aye. Aye. Any opposed like to sign? I think that gets them. Unless I'm missing them. Mr. Chairman, I think you've got them all. All right. Do anybody have any questions for uh, Dr. Griffin? Very done. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Hall, do you have any uh, budget amendments for us tonight? No, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, agenda item 16, Mayor's Report. May I address the commission? Yes, sir. I'm going to address, before I get into the Mayor's Report, uh, some tension and uh, sort of rift between the county mayor's office and, and the school administration. Um, and I'm going to sort of lay some groundwork out first. Uh, I think what's caused some of this. Um, somewhere around August the 4th is on Thursday night, I received a text from uh, the legal counsel for the school board, Mark Raines, uh, stated the school board was going to reject Tricon's uh, low bid uh, because they did not want to do value engineering with TU Parks. We also bid on the job. Uh, as I told Mark, uh, I don't think uh, you know, that was an option to rebid the project. It could cause increase in the cost. You already had a low bid of $33 million. Uh, so when I was talking to some folks who are in the industry, you know, contractors, uh, architects, engineers, um, you cannot do value engineering with three or four contractors. And the term they use was bid rigging. Uh, so you can do uh, value engineering once you sign the contract with a low bidder or, or, or the contract you select. Tricon knew, uh, you know, uh, Tricon knew what the law was. That's the reason they sent a letter to the school board. They was going to sue them if they rejected their bid, and they would have probably won the lawsuit. So moving on to August the. 15th, um, went to the school board meeting along with several commissioners, old commissioners, new commissioners. Um, they took up the uh, issue of approving the bid, uh, contingency upon the county commission approving additional funding. Uh, so before they voted, I asked if I could speak. Uh, Ryan Phillips, the chairman, said, no, sir, you may not, in a very rude tone. Uh, not sure why. They voted and then adjourned the meeting. Uh, what Ryan did, not only disrespected the mayor of office, the county mayor's office, disrespected the county commissioners over there. The biggest people disrespected was the people of Marion County we represent. And, uh, I, you know, all I was going to say was a 45-second comment that I've been in contact with financial folks and we could have borrowed $9 million with no increase to the taxes. But I was denied that opportunity to, to say that. So I uh, understand uh, Ryan has told some folks that uh, Mark Crane, the legal counsel, had told them not to let anyone speak. Uh, so they refused me to speak. On September the 12th, I attended the school board meeting, standing at the back door against the Coke machine. Mr. Ryan asked me a question. I'd done about right face and walked out. Left them in silence. So the next morning, uh, 
school board member Bensley was on Facebook saying it was his opinion is the most inappropriate act he's seen by a public official. Well, I contacted Mr. Bensley and I said, you know, why, what I'd done, why was it wrong? Why was what Ryan done not wrong? You know, he went on Facebook the next morning about that. And of course, Ms. Hooper agreed with him. That's fine. Uh, you know, that, that what we said was wrong or what I'd done was wrong, which I don't think it was wrong. Uh, you know, so silence speaks volumes. And then now the school board knows how Samantha Robinson felt when they were silent to her when uh, legal counsel would let the uh, school board members comment on her issue with, with some issues at Jasper Middle School. You know, and I promise you, that's not over with yet either. So there's some things we're going to be looking at. Uh, we'll have a couple workshops starting next week to address moving the county from law of 1957 to law of 1981. So what does that mean? That means everything will come under central finance and purchasing. All three divisions of the government, highway department, school board funding, and the general fund. We'll hire a, uh, a finance director. They would have a staff. And this will cost money to get started. But in the long run, you'll have one person doing all the purchases instead of three different groups doing purchasing, buying a box of toilet paper here and a box here, and you can buy them both and save money. Um, that There will be a seven-member board. There will be a finance board or, or what's the, the finance <coughs> board, Billy? There will be made up of seven members, county mayor, director of schools, road superintendent, and four other members could be county commissioners or members of the community. So that's one thing we're going to be looking at. And like I said, we will have two workshops. One will be next Thursday at 5 o'clock, and then we'll have one on the 17th at 5 o'clock with the state comptroller's office telling us why we need to do this. And the state comptroller's office has been pushing for us to do this uh, for the last several years. It's always in the very back of our audit. Um, I have also instructed uh, our county attorney to get a state attorney's tonight. They're voting to spend money and never discuss how much it, you know, uh, is being spent. Paying this, paying that, never brought out, no transparency. Uh, something else that concerns me, uh, there's a couple of things on the, the agenda where they're disposing, removing the equipment. What equipment? Where's it going? Who's getting it? Tonight, you all just voted to do surplus property for uh, Road Commissioner Hawk, so he can sell it, do whatever. We have to do the same thing. The sheriff will sell police vehicles, have to bring it for this commission. So, wh where's that equipment going? What, what equipment is it? There's nothing there to tell us what that is. No transparency again. Also, I've asked the county attorney to seek a state attorney general's opinion on the executive meeting they had prior to the August 15th meeting when they actually run two of our county commissioners out of the meeting. How can you discuss business behind closed doors? We have workshops, but they're open to the public. We don't lock the door. We don't run people out. So that's some things we're going to be looking at. There's some other things, another couple things we're going to be looking at. We'll bring up at a later date, maybe next month. might be a couple months down the road. So I want to just address that. If it, you know, I won't say anything else about it. That's, that's my last comment about the, the, the issue between me and the school administration. Just be, be blunt about it. Me and Mark's been friends for years. Uh, but, you know, that's, that was a very inappropriate thing to do to the office of mayor and to the commissioners and our citizens. Plain and simple. So I'm going to let that uh, die down right there, and I'm going to go into my mayor's report. Uh, and I feel better. Uh, <laughs> I'm going into the mayor's report. Wasn't that part of your that's mayor. part of it, but I... <laughs> Get the negative out of the way first, and then you end up with positive stuff, Commissioner Blancy. Uh, we had two RFIs this last month. Uh, one of them was called Strain. It was, they were looking for 20, 30 acres, 300 jobs. There's no investment numbers. We did send back the uh, Highway 150, 28 site. Then we had Project Air. It was looking at 60, 100 acres, 250 jobs, $250 million investment. Uh, we opted not to send something back on that. There's a little issue. They were talking about needing air permits and some other permits. It doesn't really sure what that industry might be. So we try to make sure we get clean industry before we send stuff back. So there's just not enough information for us to send something back. If you've not been out to county park here in the last few months, uh, take time to run out there. We have a 
great park director out there, uh, out there now, Lana uh, James. Uh, and uh, I want to thank Daryl Pittman, uh, Jake Davis with the State High School Fishing Association. They put in a new floating dock at the boat ramp as you go in on the left there. That was donated. Uh, the only thing we paid for was the concrete. Uh, the guy builds these docks over, I think, Manchester. I, I didn't get the name of the company, but we'll get that and get, send them a thank you card. But I think they're going to actually give us another section to add to it. Uh, had over, almost 300 boats this weekend over there for a high school fishing tournament. That brings tax dollars to our business. It brings tax dollars to the county. Uh, had a great event over there. No issues. Everything went smooth, and we just appreciate uh uh, what Alonia and, and the Darrells done over there to try to get some stuff done. New signage stuff up looks good over that way. We have received two grants here in the last uh, couple weeks. One is for $36,000 for the airport. When they first sent this out, I refused to take it. It was caused to buy $36,000 worth of cleaning supplies. COVID money. They've changed the rules, and we can use it for what we want to out there. So we'll be having an airport board meeting, trying to make a decision what we're going to do with that $36,000 uh, to do some improvements out there. I also received a $95,000 grant for tourism. And this is some ARP money that's come from the state. So uh, Denise will be doing some webinars the next couple of weeks to figure out what we can, what we can spend that money on. Uh, so we'll learn more about that. Uh, there have been several lawsuits filed in the last few uh, years for companies that produce opioids. Uh, and the county, several counties in the state of Tennessee started this lawsuit, and then the state of Tennessee got involved. And they've hired a group, uh, Brown and Greer, I think is the name of it, uh, to oversee this. So we received a first payment. It was a little over $11,000. And uh, Commissioner Hargis is familiar with what we can do with that money. It's, I think it's some... Uh, rehabilitation programs, stuff like that. So we'll be working on with the sheriff and them to see what we need to do with that 11000 That's just the first payment. Uh, did receive a lawsuit today from uh, in Condo Indo, Indo International. Their pharmaceutical company is filing bankruptcy, trying to get protection from the lawsuits. So, uh, and they're having a hearing in Kentucky. They've sued the Commonwealth of Kentucky over that. Well, there's a, <coughs> you, you might mention too, there's tons of these these pharmaceutical companies are being sued and it's not one big lawsuit they're individual yeah. lawsuits so you'll see them trickle in probably to where all dead and gone yeah. um, it'll take a while for some of them to settle i'm sure that is correct yeah. uh another grant we received uh through it's a cdbg grant it's for child care of three hundred six thousand eight hundred seventy seven dollars we're just a flow-through entity. This is being used at Nana's Nest out here on Highway 41 doing an addition out there. Uh, Southeast Development Addition went to all the ch uh, daycare facilities in Marion County. That's the only one that come back with a proposal. Uh, there's no match. Y'all approved a resolution four or five months ago the commission did for this. Uh, so there'll be $306,000 will be coming uh, to do some renovations out there. Uh, also, uh, Southeast Tennessee Development District received a $500,000 grant for the 10 Southeast Tennessee counties to be used for individuals and employers that have been affected by substance uh, abuse disorder crisis. So they'll be handling that money. I'm not sure uh, what the regs are on that just yet, but there'll be some money that the development district will be getting out to, to the 10 counties through the Southeast area of Tennessee. On Saturday, October the 8th, from 8 a.m. until noon, there will be a household hazards waste collection at the Lowe's parking lot. Uh, you have a flyer in your a packet there in front of you, so I encourage you folks to use that. If you have any hazardous household uh, stuff, be sure to take it by there. And that's put on by the state of Tennessee and through our uh, ag office here. The rail spur update, Highway 156 is closed at Morris Crossing. It's closed at 8 o'clock this morning. We'll be closed, hopefully, open back up about five o'clock uh, Friday afternoon I went over this morning they've got the asphalt up so hope to get that rail across there and hope to get this uh, rail spur finished October 15th somewhere around that date so that'll be a big benefit get some trucks off the roads hopefully and uh, hopefully spur a plant coming into the port property down there so you can see that rail sitting there at the end of their property line 
a uh, couple things you have a letter there in front of you we received this letter from state comptroller's office and we have a certificate here behind commissioner morrison hanging on the wall uh commending us uh for getting our budget in on time and the criteria to receive this uh, certificate was your budget was adopted on or before the fiscal year end your budget was filed with our office within 15 days of adoption uh, no issues or concern were raised uh, during our review of the budget and your local government is not currently under the oversight of the water wastewater financing board and utility management review board so uh, that first time we've ever got something like that from the comptroller's office so, so just a good job everybody getting that done and we hope to get another one of those next year when we do our budget you know behind commissioner brant you'll see a bigger plaque that is the plaque they sent to us for having a clean audit last year. Now, we get a clean audit this next year, we'll be surprised because they are, ooh, it's been one more audit. They're turning rocks and asking questions and, you know, we just come off clean audit. Why all this, what's wrong? And, but they're just asking, you know, we've been doing this way for 20 years, but they, they're looking for something to change. But uh, uh, they're, they've been here since February and probably here till November. Before they finish up. Uh, also, commissioners, don't forget we need some flyer fund money. So if you can leave me some money, uh, we'll take 20s, 50s, and 100s. But uh, <laughs> and what that is for the commission, we buy flowers when someone on the commission loses a loved one or something, and then we were we've been out of money. So uh, our next uh, meeting will be October the 24th. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mayor Jackson. Uh, next will be approval of notaries. Terry A. Lane, Johnny Lynn Massendale, Rachel Marie Salksman, Linda Ashley, Paula K. Richards, D. Lynn Williams, Susan R. Boardwine, Jamie K. Record, Sarah Bible Willis, Jerry B. Bible, Deborah T. Bible, Heather Pickett. I have a question about one of them. Uh, I think it's a Jamie Rector. <laughs> okay. We don't have all nine questions. Okay, okay. <laughs> Is that a no vote for Mr. Blake? <laughs> I pass. I pass. I'm just saying. We've heard the recommendation. <laughs> Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, like sign. Next up will be general business. Uh, does any commissioner have anything? I do have something, but I want to go let you go first. Yes, Mr. Brand. I wanted to get a clarification on referencing membership uh, appointments. I spoke with the, the county attorney today and wanted to get an understanding. In the past, this commission hasn't been able to vote on appointments made by the mayor or the receipt as chairman. So I want to understand going forward what we plan on doing to correct that and make us comply with law or code, excuse me. Right. Um, what he's referring to for the benefit of the other commission members, um, by statute, your committees are to be appointed by the county mayor, uh, subject to ratification or confirmation by the county commission. So, you know, that is the process that we're going to follow because that's what the law says. Uh, the mayor in our, one of our workshops explained that, that he wasn't aware of that until he attended, I guess, an orientation session back in August after the uh, after the election. Um, so going forward, you know, that is what we're, what, as I understand from the mayor, that is what we're going to follow and follow the law in that respect. Uh, so, and, and as well, the the power that the chairman holds is from the mayor. He is an agent of the mayor. Is that correct? Well, if if the if the mayor the mayor has the authority as does the, if the chair has the authority to appoint someone to a committee or to a commission or an authority. Um, then the uh, the chair can delegate that to another person or another uh, official. Uh, the county mayor has the same authority. So uh, by virtue of the way it had been done for a number of years in the past, um, the county commission chairman had been appointing the committees, but there was no formal approval. There was discussion between the chairman and the, and the members of the body about who would serve or who wanted to serve on different committees. Um, and I guess there was acquiescence, but there was no formal vote uh, that the statute actually requires. So uh, 
but yes, yeah, so your the direct answer to your question is that would have been the, the case. The chair would have been acting as a delegate or representative of the county mayor by virtue of that statute in appointing the committees. So. Thank you. All right, any other commissioner have any questions? Yes, Commissioner Mason. Okay, I just needed on the Big Fork Road issue. Well, well, I was holding the best for last, so <laughs> <laughs> the other commissioner have. And we'll, we will, we'll, we will, uh, we'll, we'll ask Mr. McDowell here. So, so the new commissioners are up to date. Is there any other commissioner have anything they want to bring up? Mr. Chairman, I do have a request. Uh -huh. uh, some of the committees need to be meeting, and I don't think we need to wait till next month. So, what I'd like to ask if the commission will approve this is to recess tonight's meeting and readjourn next Monday at five o'clock so y'all can approve committees because we need to start having finance committee meetings. And, and the planning commission needs to start meeting because we look, uh, two members are gone off. With the commissioners? We'll do that. Any other commissioners have any questions? I, I've got one question. Yes, sir. Could we address the State Department, the TDOT, or TDOT uh, Department, and ask them? Motion by Commissioner of Levens. Is there a second? Second. All in favor of saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, like so. Any other commissioner have anything left they would like to discuss? Hearing none, um, Mr. Bernie McDowell's here and he wanted to uh, just update the new commissioners on the Big Fork Road, uh, the, the uh, occupations there, and the, uh, the hazards that uh, have been happening. Due to, due to uh, not having access down, up and down and down. <coughs> and, uh, so, Mr. Bernard, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and, and present there. I'd like to talk to the new commissioners, and I've tried to talk to some of them previously, and you to bring them up today. But the whole north end of the county has got one lane of traffic to Chattanooga. Sub Creek Road is down to one lane.
had a grandson get almost killed right there at Deepport Road. Deepport Road comes out at an angle. They don't, they don't have a proper entrance to the road there. They come out of there about, I'd say some of them comes out of there at 50 miles an hour. And they, they anticipate that they can stop at some point. And they do it lots of times. I've sat on the porch and watched them. It's just, you know, it's just practical to see all that. So if y'all would pass a resolution, I'd like this in the state. I've tried to get the state to come out, and I, I'm not getting any more. I just don't get any more on that. I think it's a good recommendation, Mr. Barney. That could go along with the rep. It's going to the same about the same subject, T dot. Uh, could we not? Yeah, combine that. Do they get their attention? Now, when you said this, is it going to uh, Senator Boland or Guard? Guard. 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 Somehow, I'm going to do. Yeah, sure. But another, another. I'd like to add to it the B four road truck. All this stopping we've had, I would say between ten and fifteen major stops. It's come across at least with the county highway department to work on. He can't even go out there and cut a tree. It'd be a film if he goes out there and cuts a tree. We got it. We got volunteers last year to go on the road for it and pass it. You can get to it. But it's not right for the citizens to have to go out there and cut trees out of the road and do a little damn thing. Over a period of time, several years later, the county could bring that road up to a good county road. I'm not asking for that money now, I'm just asking for y'all to adopt it to a county road. And I've, I've researched lots of times CPAS, and it says CPAS gives the opinion that you folks have the authority to make a public road into a county road by voting. It's a vote. No money, no nothing. It's just a simple book. That's CPAS opinion. Y'all have that thought. I know Ben and I have a disagreement with that, but anyway, uh, we've got 7,000 people probably crossing that road every day. And that, that stands high trying to support maybe one or two people against 7,000. That just ain't right. So I ask y'all also in that to take, you know, take that into the county road additional. So, Mr. Bernie, if you don't mind, respectfully, I'm going to go with your first recommendation first. Right. Is that uh, Commissioner Blevins had recommended we send uh, a letter along with the letter requesting the freeze. Uh, uh, trees. It has to do two separate letters. So, if that's okay, we'll just do two separate letters. If I could add something, Mr. Chairman, I think Bernie's suggestion about a resolution is beneficial because the resolution is an official. Act by the body. Uh, not that the letter would, couldn't have the same effect, but I think the resolution itself carries, with the letter, carries more weight. So how do you do the resolution on both? I do the resolution on both issues and send it with the letter um, to the senators, the few of us they represent that we use, um, to direct the, the, the PDOT official. Do I need to make a motion in that order for that fashion? <coughs> I make a motion to the set of resolution to our state representative, uh, Garden Iron, Irish Rudder, whoever else would, that would encompass in that district uh, to look into cutting the trees back from, from the road. Clean up. Clean up. I think we address this resolution letter to the PDOT Commission. Uh, 
is a is a road that connects uh, Suck Creek to Sequatchie County. So there's the mobility to get up and down the mountain, down 111, as well as Suck Creek there. Um, due to the fact what he had just mentioned, there's some problems, problematic issues getting up and down on Suck Creek Mountain at times. There's a lot of folks working in Chattanooga, and, and we've been wanting to try and help in some shape or fashion to get that um, uh, the ability to travel on it anyways. But of course, taking in a road, uh, you know, we, we wanted to make sure the property owners uh, for the approval of that, because there was some question of exactly where that road was, uh, who owned the property, where that, that was. Um, just the American Water had run a water line across it. They had gotten an easement, but again, those points, they could get in. But let me correct that. They had ran a water line. Whether there was easement or not, still a question. Uh, so uh, there's not one. So as of right now, the county cannot legally take that road over or can they? Well, it, it's problematic, I, and I understand what, what Bernie's saying because he has opinion. Um, some of the property owners dispute whether it's a private road or a public road. Uh, I talked to some of them, and, and Bernie's talked to some of them. He's aware that, that some of the property Say they're, they're, they have some objections to it becoming a county road, but I did talk to one of the gentlemen that, that Bernie gave me the name for the last time we met, and he has some concerns, but I think he's willing to work with the county. I don't think he's going to be an obstacle as it goes forward. Um, we have identified, this is kind of the update that Bernie's been through too, we've identified all property owners between point A and point B, roughly 54 property owners in total. Most of the, the high density numbers are in the old Skyland subdivision. Get past that, they're really only talking about a couple of property owners from there on out. There's been a recent uh, change of ownership on the large acreage track that goes over into Squatch County, and, and that gentleman actually has submitted a plat to the Planning Commission already wanting approval to do a subdivision on, on the Squatch County side of Marion County, but, but his eight lot subdivision would be completely in Marion County. And he's agreed. He's he willing to, to sign an easement. The biggest issue was the description. Mayor was able to get the engineers who did the cost estimate for the county, I guess back from last year, from up here. Um, they have provided a, a property description that we can now use for the need for dedication. So that's where we are. I actually have to work together in sending it out to them for signatures where we are. So um, right now, the only one that I'm not sure about signing are the absentee land owners. Or they don't live locally. Um, so, and, and nobody knows them. So I'm not sure if they're going to be, they're going to object or not. So if one objects, it's a no-go. Is that correct? Possibly, yes. It, it, it's problematic if somebody objects to it. And there's just no that right. greater good eminent domain. Oh, yeah, you can, you can always take it by condemnation or eminent domain. That, that's all. I don't like that term. I don't want to use that. But it, I understand the usage of the road. Is there five to six thousand travelers a day on that road? Not on that road. Not on the state highway. Yes, on the state highway. Yes. So what would that relieve as far as that congestion? Well, it would, it would give them off the route if, if they had that off the route. In other words, in other words, when you have an accident, which I, I was just saying, at least ten serious accidents. Road road is since the first year. Those folks that went five miles to get them out, but other they had to come back all the way around back to work. That that is a public road. I work. I got two volunteers to open that road up before we travel last year. We spent a lot of time volunteer help begging for material and stuff. And we got to where you can travel. But every time it rains for a period of time, it's going to make a ditch across the place. It would be a minor expense for the county highway department to go out there and take a tree out. That is a public road. The state constitution or the opinion of the CPAS says you can take what have the authority to make that into a county road. What's the definition of a public road? Public versus private, right? Yeah. No, it ain't. It, I, 
I just told you we went through there we're working on it and nobody gave us trouble. We tried. We did right, but his, his question was the definition of a public road is different than a private road. Is that, am I correct right now? The so public, public, public road is not horrible. The same thing as horrible. Nobody can see about it. And we, 50 years ago, we quit making people, private people work on roads. We, we have highway parking to take care of that. Well, is that where open and notorious comes from as far as when you're out Yes, to the some extent, that, that is part of the test. Uh, and it's, it's open to the general public, to the public road. We use the anywhere in the public. <coughs> private roads, uh, by, by state law, basically are intended for the use of, the exclusive use of certain property owners. Uh, so if you took the position, for example, that that was a private road, it would only be for use and benefit of those property owners that it crossed. Not for the general public. I don't disagree with Bernie that, that in my opinion there probably is a public road. But there are some landowners out there who disagree with that. And, and that's where it becomes problematic because if you then go out there and try to assert the position that it's a county road or a public road and the county takes it over, what you wind up getting yourself into is an inverse condemnation lawsuit from a property owner who disagrees with that. And then you're having to defend that and you're having to spend money on that. And, and the worst part about it probably is it stops everything that you're doing to try Smells like the Cumberland at Swanee a little bit. Very similar, yes, sir. Other than we have documents that help us. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Maybe your situation. Let me ask you more, too. In 2002, I was on the county commission. <laughs> Sook Creek Mountain needed a way to run water line for emergency service. It was a part of the part of the other state. The county commission told the big thing to nothing to authorize Tennessee Emergency to run that water line on this road. We obligated the county at that time for that road. Tennessee American surveyed that road. I've got the survey now. I've determined that on the water system back there. Well, I've got the plant. It's been surveyed in detail for the road there. Now, the subdivision Ben is talking about is come after that road was there. The road has been there for, since the Civil War. And we, Tennessee State, Forestry Service worked at a lot of times because they had a tire on Signal Mountain and they had one over on Signal uh, Subway. That's pretty sure. And they took their traffic to the five miles, you know, so they didn't have to walk around and they used So the road has been fitted as a public road. And if you were authorized by the state to see that, anything that you have in your court, if you vote for it, take it in, maybe that's what you are doing for. So the they have to do advisory board only. They are not the section of the That's correct. They are just to get it up. That's just like the If Biddy don't want to defend that, you've got the title to hire another attorney that won't work. Biddy's friends, Dr. Calvary. I think it's unfair to a lot of the commission sit here on South Hill that attend grass situation. And I would encourage each commissioner to go up and drive the Sub Creek Road. If you really want to experience, get up about five o'clock and then drive it. Or drive it the other way at about four in the afternoon. Uh, the last T dot count that I got, I don't know how accurate this is, was five, a little over five thousand cars daily. Correct me if I'm wrong. I checked today and they, they say it's forty five. Okay, okay. So close, we're close enough. We're, we're close. close. The, what I see on this is you have one point seven miles. <laughs> That's it. Okay. And I, I know it's not as simple as saying, let's take the road and send Mr. Hawk. I, I get that. But what I would like to see the commission do is to say, let's find a way. Okay, let's let's begin to find a way. And we are. We are. We are. And just, I just want to emphasize, okay, that not to find an obstacle and say, okay, 
we tried. You know, it's 1.7 miles. Now, that road, Mr. McDowell, how long have you lived where you currently live? I moved there in 69. 69. 53 years. Was that a county road at that time? Yeah. Was it a county road, not a public road? Was it a county road, the first part? Well, the bridge washed out over the Seagull Mountain. Yes. There was another route across the street. Uh -huh. And it washed out. And the people that lived over in there moved out because there was no electricity. Mm -hmm. So the county just sort of abandoned it. The bridge. They didn't need to replace the bridge. And the road that that route could have deteriorated to the point. Because my, my, the point I'm getting to is from point A to point B, okay, on the entirety of the Big Fork Road, not the unpaid part. That's all one and the same road. So at, at some point, the part that the county currently maintains, five miles, I believe, on the pocket, had to be in the same situation that, that the 1.7 miles is at some time back in the past. So we were able somehow, some way, at some point in the past, to do the five mile. It was the same road. Uh, and it leaves the 1.7 just hanging out there, and it had to be all one and the same at, at some time. So I would like to see the commission just don't give up on this thing and let us exhaust all of our efforts to try to find a way, because this is not far, we've not even talked about the, uh, as far as uh, property value or anything like that, so we're talking about emergency situations, whether it be EMS, police, whatever the case may be. I would encourage the commission to work diligently on this to find a way, keep us updated, to find a way uh, that there's going to be challenges, but to find a way to get 1.7 miles of this road fixed. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, that, you know, this is not general fund money. If we work with my friend, but I encourage that if, 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 if something progressed on this, it's not general fund money that would go to this. Uh, grant. Uh, if, if we don't fund any grants, if grants, right. what about State Street 8 and next to Howard? It's got to be, we had, we had T-Dot out there about six years ago. It has to be a tire chip road before that fail staff. Okay, but maybe that's something we can work toward. I just don't want to quit up. And I encourage all commissioners to drive that Sub Creek Road, drive the Big Fork Road, drive down our road pavement is. Go to Squatch County side, come in. You know, you're 1.7 miles there. And I would just like to see some way that we can find it. No matter how long it takes. Well, this is not an overnight project. Uh, Mr. Galbraith probably has months of work to do on it. I understand that. I, I'm just, I just think this needs to be fixed for the residents of the north end of the county. I'd like to add too that the commissioners may be thinking that you know we've got to put a paved road. We don't need a paved road. We need a. Just a few minutes ago, we voted on what we call an emergency Kimball to put a water line, an interconnecting to service Kimball in emergency. People in that area.
Mr. Barney, I appreciate you being here. I, I appreciate you updating the new commissioners. I know, I know we've talked to the several times there. Now, uh, Commissioner Marshall, you're exactly right. Uh, just so the new commissioner will know, uh, we did vote um, uh, to uh, go ahead and start the process of finding out property owners, uh, finding out if there's any grant dollars out there, uh, to see if there's any way, shape, or fashion. We, we don't want this to end. We want to try and find a way to do it. Now, Mr. Burney wants it a lot quicker than we might get it done, but we want to get it done. That's that's the key because those it's important for those folks to be able to travel at. It is. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when the whole side of that mountain is going to slide and make room for the county. And we got it. I mean, it's, it's something that we didn't really need to work on. What I was facing to say, I think I was built a fence across the end of it. I think that it would need, need to be a comprehensive deal where you would need to put some preventive measures in, tiles and such, if you were going to spend the money, any kind of county money on the ground. Absolutely. That, that, that's, that's what all of it Right now, right now it's a major problem. I can't explain how dangerous to that. If you go out there and travel that road, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Somebody's going to get killed. I don't want to know this. Hopefully they don't. We, we, sure we, don't. We, could, we could eliminate a lot of that possibility with that road extension to there, and, and people get, they'll pass you in the curve. They'll pass you in the And I don't even get on the road if it ain't 10 o'clock in the day. So about 10 o'clock. Two o'clock in the evening, traffic will slow down usually that time. And I, we'll go to the doctor or grocery store or whatever. Uh, it is imperative that we get that done. I can't say it. I think it's a good thing. Y'all need to go up there and ride. Right. Any other commissioner have anything? Yes, sir. Sure thing. Any other commissioner have anything? All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Hey, Bernie, you've got to fire up on this road. I'm not going to figure out how to do this. But, hey, Mitchell, we want to recess this meeting uh, through. It's going to be next Monday at 5 o'clock. So, I'm going to be recess for next Monday. Yes, sir. Next Monday at 5 o'clock. All in favor by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, like, sign. Thank you.